Well, good morning. It's time for your encouraging word. And I'm, of course, Dr. Shanta Haynes. And I want to just start off with a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for the times that we do get a chance to reflect on your word. We thank you for pouring into our hearts. And we ask that you do just that, even today. We'll bless you always. God will honor you always. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, today I wanted to bring a scripture to your attention. And actually, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. The scripture is one of my favorites. And those of you who've known me for a while know I always quote this as my favorite. And I say several others are my favorite. But Colossians, the third chapter and the 23rd verse happens to always be one that I go to. It says, whatever you do, you do it with all of your heart as unto the Lord and not to men. It gets our focus right. and It makes us live for an audience of one. But I want to do something a little bit different today in that I want to read to you from a devotion that I recently uh, completed. I'm finishing a devotional that will be out and available very, very soon. Um, and I wanted to just kind of read this to you so that you'll get a sense and then we'll, we'll continue to talk about it. But it just hit my heart today and I'm going to be reading from the Hallman Christian Standard um, Bible and it's Colossians 3, 23 to 24 and it reads as such, whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. The devotional continues and says, serving God is a privilege. Sometimes we overlook the blessing of being allowed to serve. We forget that all that we do should be done for his glory. He will make sure it works out for our good. So do it. Whatever you do, get to work doing and giving it everything you've got. Take a look at what you are doing. Is it profitable? Effective? Does it work toward your goals? Is it helpful to others? Is it building the kingdom? This week, concentrate on eliminating what is bringing you down. Is it that you don't use credit wisely? Are your bills always being paid late and you need to automate? Are you giving too much to others trying to please them? Our validation comes from God. If we look at him as our source and our creator, then what he says about us is what matters. Can God brag on you in the area of money management? If not, then it's time to make a declaration today that from this day forward, it will be different. Lord, just be pleased with our stewardship. Do you hear voices in your head that keep telling you that you are not enough? Replace them by allowing God to pour into you. Take time to put on the helmet of salvation. Remind yourself that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are to show forth, show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. God is a rewarder and your reward is waiting. He is a good God, a great God. He is the one that will send a reward. Look for it this week from unexpected places. Then smile and jot it down in your gratitude journal. He is blessing you right now. Turn around. There he goes again. I read that to you in the, the series for those devotionals that are coming out is called Divine Connection. The specific um, idea and the topic, the main theme is that getting us closer to God, yes, in that relationship, but this particular one, the subject matter has to do with finances. So you might hear some of that within it, but I'm hoping what you heard from this, and I wanted to just kind of reiterate some of the things that are in here, is that serving God is a privilege. It really is. But we start with our relationship with him. We're supposed to be a blessing to other people. So whatever we do, we're supposed to be able to be a blessing. But here's the thing. We have to get in touch with God and have that relationship with him first, allowing him to pour into us so that we'll have something 
to pour out to others. Remember, we teach and we serve from overflow. And so that's what I want you to get, that whatever we're supposed to be doing, whatever he has you here on this earth for, whatever purpose he has in mind for you, you're going to be a blessing to somebody else. And with that in mind, we keep this in, in our hearts to say, Lord, I want to be pleasing to you in everything that I do. So that's one of the takeaways. Just do it. Do what he's called you. We are living for an audience of one. And if he is pleased, then it doesn't matter what anybody else says. But until you get together with him, you won't have that overflow to pour into somebody else. But here's the other thing that I find is that our validation of self, our understanding of who we are, is based on other people's opinions and not on God's opinion. Because when we look in the word, we hear him tell us that he knew us before we were even placed in our mother's womb. He knows what he's, the gift sets that he's placed on the inside of us. He knows what we can pour into others. He knows what we're able to do. And when we really get on board and step into that water, that river of all of what God has entrusted in us, then we're not going to hold back. We're not going to be mediocre. We're not going to half step. We're going to be excellent. We're going to be self-sufficient and responsible, or I should say Christ-sufficient, but responsible for what it is that we do because we recognize that the God of this entire universe decided with all of what he has out there that he needed you. And he wanted you to represent him in the kingdom. Now, one of the things I thought about too is in serving God, he's entrusted in us this treasure. The Bible says we have these treasures in earthen vessels. We're made of clay. We're dirt, anointed dirt, but we're still dirt. And in that, there's so many benefits and blessings inside of us, but we're cracked pots. But you can't see the light coming through unless you were cracked. So don't feel bad that your past is your past and it was not the best. Don't feel that you've made mistakes all of your life and why should you continue to move forward? Guess what? Somebody else can be blessed through you sharing your story. Because see, we overcome not only by the blood of the lamb, but by the words of our testimony. So whatever you do, my encouragement for you today is to not be mediocre. Do it with excellence. If you recognize all of what God has poured into you, you'll give out just that much in that manner so that it is the absolute best. My mom always taught me that as you're looking at what you're turning in for work, the question was always, is this representative of who you want to be seen as? Does this work represent you? Now, I will say that my dad and I know a whole lot of other dads say, you've got my name stamped on it, right? And so they kind of go back to the DNA. You, you're using my name, and because you're using my name, it needs to show in such a way. Well, here's the thing. We use God's name. We say we're Christ followers. Can he, when he looks at what you're doing, put a stamp on it that says, awesome job? Not mediocre job. Not okay job. Not average job. But can he stamp it? awesome. Today and the rest of this week, be awesome in what you do. Know that you've got the God of this entire universe behind you and know that he's entrusted you with so much grace and so much favor that you can do it. Don't doubt yourself, but trust him. Let others see in you the good that comes out, the overflow because you've got the good book. Many people are not going to pick up the Bible and read it. And we're supposed to be living epistles read by many. Be a good book that they're reading. 
because your basis was the good book. Have an absolutely fantastic week. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you for your encouraging word that there is so much that we can do. Help us to give the smiles this week or help us to bake cookies if that's what you have us to do. And even though we might not be able to get together in the groups that we would want to, it doesn't prevent us from picking up the phone or sending a text message of encouragement. Thank you for encouraging us in your word that you know us and you're believing in us and you're expecting us to be excellent in all that we do. Help us to show that to the rest of the world and be the light for them in times of darkness, times of trouble, times of heartache. Help us to be that bridge for them to get back to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. And everyone who is listening, I pray that something was said today that encouraged them. It's in Jesus' name that I ask all these blessings. And yes, Every time I turn around, you keep on blessing us. We thank you for that.